Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, regularly scheduled meeting of the Ways and Means Committee. I'm John Quincy, uh, Chair of this committee, and we're, of course, joined by Council Members uh, Andrew Johnson, Council Vice President Glidden, Council Member Yang, and the birthday girl herself, happy birthday, <laughs> Lene Palomasano. Thanks for spending your afternoon with us. Uh, great. Uh, I think we have a relatively uh, light um, consent agenda, and then we'll be following up with a report of the 2013 annual report on the Minneapolis Ethical Practices Board. And just wanted to give a heads up to uh, folks that we'll be resuming our budget hearings on Thursday uh, with a, a variety of uh, departments who will be reporting out on that day. So. We'll check the, our calendars and for those times. Uh, the first item on the consent agenda is uh, two uh, legal settlements. One uh, is a claim with uh, Lindsay Hall versus the city, and the other is a settlement of non-monetary relief related to the tree servicing uh, ordinance. Um, the convention center is bringing forward an amendment to a contract with Insight Wireless for wireless network services agreement. Human Resources Department is bringing forward a number of items related to the HR classroom online training with uh, Curtis Communications. Uh, there's uh, from the Executive Committee, we have the uh, tentative uh, agreements with the Convention Center Production Technicians Unit and the Waterworks Management or Waterworks Maintenance Unit. Um, we have a master grant contract with the Minnesota Department of Health and an accept a grant agreement uh, with the Department of Justice accepting $222,200 in funding for an additional year for the Youth Violence Prevention Grant. Um, also from the Health Department or Health Environment and Community Engagement uh, Committee, no, these are Transportation and Public Works Committee, my mistake, uh, North Minneapolis Greenway Outreach, execution of, a, of several sub-grant agreements uh, the, 2000, or the federal 2014 Paul Coverdale Forensic Science Improvement Program, uh, bomb security services for Minnesota Timberwolves basketball games, and from the Transportation and Public Works Department or Committee, we'll have the Green Corps host site agreement for, with Minneapolis, or Minnesota Pollution Control Agency for solid waste and recycling and property services and the authorizing an increase to the contract with Burwald uh, Roofing for the Government Center Parking Ramp Replacement Project. There's uh, acceptance of two responsive bids, uh, two low responsive bids for Institute Form Technologies and Bortec Hydro Vac. And uh, with those uh, 12 items for your approval today, I'd like to move that consent agenda. Any questions or any items to pull off? Good. All those in favor of those items, please say aye. Aye. And those items pass. And so now we're joined by Ms. Trammell, if you could join us and uh, begin the 2013 annual report from the Minneapolis Ethical Practices Board. Thank you, Chair Quincy, members of the committee. Um, it's my pleasure to present to you the 2013 annual report before the end of 2014. Um, in many respects, this was a very typical year for the Ethical Practices Board. We received roughly the same number of inquiries as in prior years, roughly the same number of complaints as in prior years. And uh, those are detailed in your report. The main highlight, though, of 2013 involved the release of the electronic ethics training video that was produced by the city of Minneapolis Mainly, we, we had hired actors for one very small portion of it, but it was otherwise produced through cooperation with um, IT division, Grant Johnson from IT and Kevin Lutz, along with Bridget Bornstein and her team in communications. Without them, we would not have made it uh, to the release in late October, and we used uh, employee actors for all of the other scenarios that were in that, and they did just an awesome job. We received many favorable comments back from employees, and including the, the most frequent question from employees was, who did this for you, and will they do something like that for me? Mm. 
And then I also received a comment from outside because in the ethics world, the ethics officers share data. And so we sent out a link to our training to various other cities. And I heard back um, from the lead ethics officer from Austin, Texas, and this is what she said. I watched it today and it was awesome. I'm preparing the annual training for my company. I must say that when she sent this back, she had moved on. And so she was now with a private company. And in preparation, I watched a lot of vendor samples. Your module was better than 90% of what I saw, and those vendors were charging a fortune. Mm. And so in, in many ways, that sums up our year because th that was our main focus for the year. We did that with rollover money that um, through your budget process, you graciously gave us um, in 2012. And we actually underspent of that $40,000 we um, have it designated for three segments of training. The second segment, Statements of Economic Interest, was rolled out in 2014, and you saw that when you filed your Statements of Economic Interest. And the last piece is a module on political activity, which is still ongoing. So we've made well use of the $40,000. I really have nothing else to report on this. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to entertain them. I'm just, uh, thank you, Ms. Trammell, for that uh, report uh, and the more detailed version that's available online, folks are invited to look at. I'm looking at page nine and just uh, notice a couple things that uh, by category seem a little bit uh, different. Uh, one is the statement of economic interest. Uh, is that increased because we have so many new folks involved with new administration? Um, Chair Quincy, that would be incorrect. Oh, that is um, exactly why we had so many increases. Could have been because of the election, because at the time that this was, this is for 2013, so oh, right. the new council members were not on yet uh, in 2014. So the big thing that we'll want to see is in 2014, if by having the instructions on the actual form that you file electronically helped with people trying to fill out the form. Right. Yeah, th thank you for reminding us. This, of course, is a 2013, uh, 2013 report. And then the other item that's uh, significantly different is miscellaneous, which is, I'm sure, a collection of a number of different categories. Was there any highlights in there that is worth noting? Yes, there is. Um, most of that is due to ethics, the ethics training rollout. Um, we learned a couple things initially when we rolled out, uh, and that is that a number of employees do not know their employee ID number, or their email address. And so they weren't initially receiving their certificates because they were mistyping their email address and or their employee ID. And so we had, I responded to a tremendous number of inquiries in the first few weeks of the rollout, and those are included in there. And I think that's why we have so many miscellaneous this time. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you much. Are there any additional questions or comments? Not seeing any. Uh, you said this was the normal timing and practice, so we can look forward to the 2000 report, uh, 2014 report. When? Well, uh, Chair Quincy, this is actually this is the, the normal report for the year. However, it's been delayed this year. Normally, I try to get it out to the council by March. March. So um, this year was delayed in, in main part because of all the new council members and some other activity that was going on. Right. Look forward to it in the spring of next year. Yes, sir. Great. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Trammell. And seeing no further business, we are adjourned. Although we can receive and file that officially, I'm sure. So all those in favor of receiving and filing, please say aye. 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 And now we're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.